This is MathGuide.com and my name is Mark Karadimos. Today in this video we're going to take a look at how to graph ellipses. So in this video we are going to specifically look at how to find the center, how to graph the vertices, and then of course how to locate the foci. Alright, let's get started. Alright, as you can see here I have a coordinate graph set up. So it has an x-axis, it has a y-axis, uh, and I have an equation off to the top left. And you can see that this equation is an ellipse. First of all, why is it an ellipse? Well, it has two squares. We're taking the sum of these two squares, and the numbers in the denominator there are different. And since they are different, it is not a circle, but it is an ellipse. All right, well, let's get started as to how to graph it. So the first place you start is with dealing with the center. All right, the center, as it turns out, is located by uh, looking at the values that are inside the parentheses with the x and the y. Now, those values we're just going to take the opposite of. Since this number is by the x, we're going to take the opposite of it, and it becomes the location of the center. Okay, so it looks like the center is going to be at 1. And since this here is by the y, we take the opposite of that and put it with a y value of our center. Okay, so there you go. So our center is at 1, negative 3. So you go to 1, go down to negative 3. I have the location of the center. All right, let's locate the vertices. Now it turns out there are four extreme points called vertices. So the vertices are located by using these denominators. Uh, the number that's underneath the x, since x is a left and right movement, right, x-axis goes left and right, then if I take the square root of this number, it's 5, that means I'm going to go 5 left and right from the center. Okay, so picture doing that. Let's go from here. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was 5 right. Now I'm going to go 5 left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that was, remember, 5 left and right from the center. Okay, so where is this guy located? This one is located at 1. Oops, that's not 1. Take that back. That is uh, 6, negative 3. Okay, there's a vertex right there. All right, let's locate this one. Well, it's going to be at negative 4, negative 3. And there's another vertex. All right, so we went 5 left and right to get the x vertices. In other words, the vertices that are going left to right, almost like on an x-axis. Now let's get the vertical vertices. So let's take the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So from the center, we go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we go down 4. 1, let's see, 1, 2, 3. Going to have to go off the grid here slightly, but I think we could locate that fairly easily. So this point right here is going to be at 1, 1. Okay, this point over here is going to be located at, let's see, that's 1, negative 7. And we've got the vertices. Now, carefully, if I am to sketch this uh, ellipse, what you do, and, and this is hard to do by hand, but you basically are going to draw what looks like an oval. Now, again, it, it is hard to do this accurately by hand, which I'm, I'm trying to do here as best I possibly can. Um, and it, it is hard to get this shape right. But if you do do this, I'm going to try to get around this you're going to get this oval-like shape. Now again, usually when I do this by hand, it looks egg-shaped, and it does. And I just didn't want to go through this uh, line here, but, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the location here, the coordinates of this point, but you can see that it does have this oval shape. Now also notice that it's not circular. If you remember, we went five left and right, we went four up and down, so it's slightly stretched more horizontally than it is vertically. Right? So the length of our major axis is 5, 
plus 5. It's got a major axis of 10. The minor axis here is 4 plus 4. Well, that's a minor axis of 8. All right, so it's stretched more horizontally. Now, this is kind of important for us to know. Since it's stretched more horizontally, the uh, foci are on this major axis, this, the space where it's stretched more, Okay, which is given away by this value. 25 is bigger than 16, so we know that it's stretched more horizontal, horizontally more than it is vertically. Okay, so we've got our vertices, we've got the center. The next thing to do is find the foci. All right, so the foci requires the use of a formula. And the formula is fairly easy to do uh, and to use. What we do is take these denominator values, and this value here is a squared. This value here is b squared. And we subtract them, which is always the opposite of the sign right here in the middle. Now, why am I calling it a squared? Now, if you remember, when I took the square root of this value, it gave me 5. That's a. a is 5, so a squared is 25. Remember, the square root of this number was 4. That's our b. So 4 squared, or b squared, is 16. So we view these as squares just like we do the numerators. All right, so let's calculate. Let's actually use this formula. All right, well, if we plug these values inside the formula, we're going to take 25 minus 16, we're going to get 9. Okay, so we now can take the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. All right, so again, on the major axis, which is horizontal, we now go three units from the center. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And we now have our foci. Okay, so where's the location of this focal point? Well, it looks like it's at negative 2, negative 3. Where's this one at? It is at 4, negative 3. It's no surprise that all of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points, all of these points have the same y value, negative 3. Okay, they all have negative 3. And these three points, since they're vertical of each other, they all have the same x value, 1, 1, and 1. And there you have it. We have everything graphed. Uh, sorry, it's a crude drawing here of the ellipse, but I think you get the point. And we've got everything done. And this is uh, how you graph an ellipse. Uh, many times when you calculate the focus, just so you know, uh, most of the time this is a decimal value. Rarely does it come out as cleanly as it did for this problem as it does for other problems. So keep in mind that you will get decimal values uh, somewhere down the line for these. And it's okay. You just count just like you would any other number and just be careful of uh, your spacing. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com to see our lessons, our instructional videos, and our interactive quizzes. Take care.